Hello and welcome to today's video. Today I'll be teaching you how to create a Grand Theft Auto 5 YCD clip dictionary using ZModeler 3. I'll be going over the process for animating a piece of your mesh with rotation and movement keyframes, as well as the process for making your animation work in game. Please note, this tutorial is not for ZModeler 3 beginners. You need a fairly good understanding of ZModeler 3 and their GTA 5 vehicle modding workflow in order to create animations for your vehicle. With that being said, onto the tutorial. Chapter 1 Understanding the Track Editor. Okay, so we're here in ZModeler now. I'm going to click on the Track Editor to open the Track Editor. For the purposes of explaining how this works, I'm going to create a new animation and add a track to the animation as well. So we'll just drag and drop the track over so we can explain how all these work. So we have the movement track, the rotation track, and the scale track, as well as the special track. These are all channels that you can add keyframes to for your animation. One thing to note about your keyframe tracks is that unless you want to add keyframes to every active channel, you need to disable them first. So for example, if I double click at the top here to add a keyframe, it adds a keyframe to all of the active channels. Now, if you don't want to add a keyframe, for example, to the rotation channel, but you just want to add it to the movement channel, then you will disable it here. So now we'll double click to add a keyframe and it only adds it to the movement track. You can turn back on rotation. It's obviously not there. So that's just something to keep in mind. Another thing to note is that you can select with right click plus drag. And you can deselect with double right click like so. You can also move your cursor in the timeline to another point. You can either hit set key or double click the timeline at the top here to add a, another keyframe. So that's just something I wanted to note so you guys know how it works. Now we will move on to the next part. Chapter two, creating your animation. Okay, now that we've done that, we're going to move on to how to actually animate the bones on your car. So first things first, I'd like to note that if you're doing movement and rotation keyframes or a movement and rotation animation, then you want to make sure that you've set up the flags correctly on your bones dummy. So if I go to the roof dummy, which is the one that we'll be animating and I hide all, turn just it on on its own and then turn off L0 and drag to select it. I'm going to properties, user defined options. You can see here that flags AE have been applied. Now flags AE allow the animation in game to animate both the rotation and the movement channels. If the flag if this flag is missing, only the rotation channel will work in game. So that's just something to note. Let's turn everything back on. Sorry. So first things first, we're going to create our animation and get the correct options set up for it. So I'm going to go to the track editor. I'm going to create a new animation by hitting this drop down and hitting new animation. We're going to call this. You can basically call it whatever you want, uh, but I'm going to call it Oracle C. And what we want to do is set the interpolation to none, turn off preferred time and turn off relative to bind. Now what we want to do is hit properties, like so. We want to add a new one. So this we will name audio colon ID. Hit add. And then you want to copy what I've set in the sent in the description and paste these into the value. Like so. So these are what will end up in the special track. We'll cover this later, but it's just, we have to do this setup in order to make it work. And now here we will create a new event. Just want to call it the same as what you've done in the option thing at the top. So audio ID, you see it's created a new one there. That's perfect. That's exactly what we want. And now we can exit properties. Now what you want to do is add a track. 
like so. We'll open this up. You can see track one. You can name this whatever you want. So we're going to name it uh, sunroof. Now what you want to do is turn this on. It's called free mode and it will basically allow you to animate the mesh on a step-by-step -step basis without messing with things. So we're going to do that. And then we're also going to drag and drop the bone that we want to animate onto our track. So in this case, we're going to drag and drop roof onto the sunroof. You can see here it says control sunroof. If you ever want to delete something from the control section, you just left click it and then hit the Del key and it'll delete it. Okay. Now we will drag and drop the sunroof onto the timeline. And we'll open this up and we'll also open this as well. Now, by default, we've got movement and rotation enabled. That's normal. That's fine. You can also keep scale disabled as well. Um, I was told that the scale track won't actually export in the YCD clip dictionary because it's not supported by the game, but I don't know that for sure. That's just something that I was told. So I'm uh, reiterating it here. Now, first things first, we want to set our start keyframes for rotation and scale. So we leave both of these active. And then we set the key like so. So we've got a bunch of keys on XYZ for rotation and scale. We want to set the interpolation to linear on every keyframe that we create as well. Okay, so now we're going to move to about... We're going to go to around 50, so it's about half a second. Actually, we'll do it at one. We'll do it at one. Now what we're going to do, so I'm just going to move this over here. I want to switch to local and then switch the uh, axis mode to X. We're going to turn off the movement because we are only rotating on this one. And then we're going to go to modify, rotate. We're going to click on the options for this and we want to make sure that rotate geometry and rotate axis are both enabled. So just keep that in mind. Now, on my animation specifically, we're going to rotate to around five degrees. So we've got local X and then we're going to do five. Like so. Now that we've done that, we're going to add another keyframe. So we're going to do set key. You can see here, it goes from zero to five. And if we were to scrub through the animation, you can see that it goes from zero to five in the animation. Like so. Now what we want to do is go to where we intend for the animation to end, which in this case is at three. And we'll want to set another key with the exact same position. So it just stays at five. So that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. Now what we're going to do is going to go to just after it rotates. So we're going to go to about 117. And we're going to disable the rotation track and enable the movement track again. And we're going to add a keyframe. And then we're going to move to the end of the animation. And we're going to move this. So we're going to set this back to screen. We're going to move it on X in, from this view. So it's technically Z that it's moving on, but we're going to move it on X from this point of view. I'm going to move this all the way back until we're happy with the position of it. So I'm just going to minimize this real quick so I can make sure it's not flipping inside, which it isn't. Oh, it is a little bit. So we will move it up a little bit so it's not flipping. Now we'll unminimize this and we will set our key like so. So now with both active, now we'll turn off free mode and we'll just scrub through to make sure our animation is as we want it to be. Yeah. So that is our, as we want it to be, but we need to make sure that all our keyframes are set to linear. 
So I'm going to use the right click select to select all of them. And I'm going to set the interpolate mode to linear. And then we'll deselect everything. Now when we play through, it should move as it as it would normally. I don't know whether the other interpolate modes are supported in the game, but linear is the one that is used on a lot of Rockstar's roofs and stuff like that. So now we've got our animation, like so. Now what we're going to do is just hit close on this. We've basically created our animation now, but we want to cover the tags, so we'll do that next. So we'll hit X, and then we'll hit X on that as well. We want to click the top, so the root, and then create another track. And then we're going to use the like the stripe brackets to create a new name for this. And this one's called tags with open brackets and close brackets. The um the sharp type, not the curly type. Like so. So at the bottom here, you'll notice that you can still see the keyframes for the rest of your animation. Now, this is what you're going to need to pay attention to. This will help you out in a second when we uh, get to the tags. So if we drag and drop the tags on here, open it up and then open it up here, we want to disable the movement and rotation and we want to enable the special track. Now for this one, you want to set your these keyframes using the double click that I explained about earlier because it doesn't work with set key because it's not a uh, movement, rotation, or scale track. So just keep that in mind. So we're going to set our first keyframe, which we'll do by double clicking. You can see it's appeared here. And you want to click on events, set it to audio ID, and this number will correspond to the entry inside properties here. So for example, this one here is one, this one here is two, this one here is three, this one here is four, etc., etc. So this first one we want to name, I think, uh, what, what are we? So one, two, three. So this one needs to be three. This is roof start. So this one wants to be three. And then we're going to move to uh, here on the timeline. I'll do it to here. And then we will add another keyframe. Set this to audio ID and set it to three. And then we're going to go back by one. I'm going to add another keyframe. And we're going to call this one four. Then we're going to go to the end. Add another keyframe, set the event ID to audio ID, and then we'll set this to four as well. Let's just go back to this one and set the event to audio ID. Now, basically, the special track is controlling when a hard-coded sound will play and stop. Now, one thing to note about these hard-coded sounds is that it they seem to be hierarchy-dependent. This is an issue that um, I was working on with Oleg over the past week to try and figure out. And what we've determined is that on a stock GTA car, these seems to work as intended, but on any custom car, it seems to be seemingly random. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but we do know that it's dependent on the bones that you've got in the hierarchy. So although none of these will work for my car specifically uh, in this tutorial, they might work with yours, so you should do them just in case. So now we've got the full set of keyframes that we need. So we can close this now. And we're going to go to go to the drop down menu. We're going to go to save as file. And then we're going to save as VA, which stands for vehicle animation, and then whatever name you want here. In this case, I usually stick to naming it the same name as my the model name of my vehicle. So VA Oracle C dot YCD, and then you hit save. Like so. So that's fully set up now. And we can obviously scrub through our animation to make sure it's working properly, which it is. Now what we're gonna do, just because I haven't, I'm gonna export my car. So file export. Oracle C. Oracle C again, so for all the LODs. And in the next chapter, we will cover how to get it 
how to get your animation to work in game. Chapter three, making your animation function in game. So now we'll move on to getting it to work in game. So I'm gonna go to open IV and my add on DLC RPF times 64 vehicle start RPF. Now for this one, I'm gonna to go to the exported folder on my car and drag and drop the models. And I'm also going to drag and drop our exported animation file. So VA Oracle C.YTD, like so. Now we need to go to DLC RPF, data, vehicles.meta, we need to edit it. Here in the anim roof, animconv roof dict name, we need to copy and paste the name of the animation itself. So the animation file in this case is VA underscore oracle.ycd so we do everything other than the extensions like so yay underscore oracle c like so now for the animation conv roof name we want to copy the name from the root of the track editor so in this case it's oracle c now if your animation messes with animating the windows this will basically determine which windows need to be turned off after the animation is finished playing. Um, if you want examples of what should be put here, then you can check the 9F2 or any other of the standard GTA 5 cars that has the windows animating. So we've done that now and that looks good. We'll hit save and we will test it in game. So we're going to spawn the car in. We'll jump inside it. Now to make the animation work, you just want to hold H or right on the D-pad. And it will play it. So it's in its open form now. And if I hold right on the D-pad again, it will close it. Obviously, you can also start holding it and it will continue to play until it's finished as well, once you get out of the vehicle. Anyway, I hope this tutorial was helpful. It's probably the most ambitious tutorial I've ever made. Um, it was very difficult, took a lot of research, etc. So, if you'd like to, please leave a like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.